Okay, so that's uh, ideas coming in uh, from Neeran Jivan there as far as our own exchange goes. Uh, Pankaj Pandey, head of research at ICICIdirect.com, uh, also now live with us. Uh, good morning. Uh, you have been talking about auto and capital goods as your top picks for quite a while, and those have been the top performers even in the markets with the leadership coming back to these sectors. Uh, so, Pankaj, uh, this is where you're going to continue to uh, recommend. This is what your top picks are. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me. Good morning. Uh, now, coming to auto, I think there are multiple levers which are sort of uh, benefiting auto as overall. Uh, besides the hero, uh, we have seen Tata Motors also taking price hikes. Uh, we have seen commodity prices like steel correcting 15%, aluminum over 20% uh, in, the in the last one month. Then I think the kind of launches what you are seeing from most of the players, be it Maruti, be it uh, m and uh, I think is also highlighting towards a healthy volume trend. And CV is another segment which has been sort of doing very well month on month. And our sense is that even 20-25% kind of a growth, uh, we may not still be sort of uh, peaking uh, to, or we may not be reaching uh, the FI19 levels. So there is still a lot more headroom for growth in the autos as overall. And which is why right from uh, uh, Maruti to uh, m and uh, Automotive Excel, uh, Minda Corporation, I think all these companies uh, is what are topics uh, in the auto as a space. On the capital goods, uh, our sense is that this is one segment uh, uh, where the order inflows have been good. We are expecting that the government will pre uh, their capex in the first half. So 60% of the ordering and tendering is expected to happen and that should sort of uh, lead to better uh, healthy uh, order book for most of the companies. I mean, be it bearing companies or be it even a bigger company like l &D. And then uh, with the commodity prices also softening, uh, things are uh, turning out good for them. So we like uh, companies uh, like Timken, uh, something like AI engineering, uh, including LNT. So uh, I think uh, capital goods and uh, uh, auto, I, I think, are clearly beneficiaries of the softness in the commodity prices, especially the metals, uh, what we're seeing. And, uh, and our sense is that uh, both these uh, sectors have been sort of holding up well. And as and when the market overall sort of recovers furthermore, uh, these sectors uh, will uh, sort of outperform the market uh, uh, overall. Will Reliance Industries' Pankaj Pandey become a special situation stock? The fact that Akash Ambani is now the chairman of Jio. Jio, according to Reliance Sum of Part, is almost one third of the underlying value of Reliance. Will markets now start speculating, assuming, calculating, talking that Reliance, either Jio will go public or Reliance will be split in two or three parts? So, Neko, uh, difficult to sort of comment when this uh, demerger or split will happen. But uh, when we sort of look at individual business segments, uh, so when you look at the refining segment, uh, refining segment should do extremely well uh, given the fact that uh, diesel uh, slate uh, is the highest for the company. And we have seen the spread being uh, uh, all time high. So, obviously, that is one segment uh, which will benefit. I think retail is another segment where the pre-COVID recovery rate is very good. And overall, when you look at the space addition, is quite significant uh, compared to what uh, they would have done in the last two, three years. So uh, I think all the engines are sort of firing for uh, Reliance Industries. And I think uh, within oil and gas uh, as overall, I think this is our top pick uh, with a target price of 3050. Uh, overall, blended earnings are expected to grow in excess of 21% uh, on the top line and 23% on the bottom line. So they could be easily beating the overall uh, nifty growth for the next two years. Okay, I'm just going to shift focus and talk about a sector which we rarely discuss, but it is traded very, very frequently. And uh, then there is something in sugar in GST, right? No, they, they might look at sugar, but the main point seems to be for puffed rice, edible oils, etc. Something's coming on sugar. Maybe I just remember. The warehouses it. right now get an exemption on the services that they provide. That might go away. The warehouses that store. Uh, so nothing changes incrementally. Yeah, not much. Mr. Botra, sugar? Yeah, I think we were discussing this point yesterday, Nikunj, that uh, the large cap ones from the sugar pack, the likes of Balrampur Chini, they look very attractive. In fact, that's one stock which is managed to sort of shield uh, majority of the correction for itself. You know, the stock had done reasonably well, in, uh, in fact, exceptionally well from the 2020 lows and even prior to that as well. And uh, now in this phase of correction, the stock has corrected 20%, 22% from its previous swing high. So, you know, it's a very marginal kind of a correction when you look at it from a larger scheme of things for Balrampur Chini. The other group of stocks have, uh, uh, you know, corrected sharply. So I think the likes of Dwarikesh, Dampur Sugar, 
these are the names which have credited sharply but then balram purchin is just hanging around the 200 day moving average so i i would be uh, you know bullish on on that stock and one of the other names which you discussed from the ethanol play was uh, you know praj industries i think that also <coughs> looks fairly attractive in fact this stock has come back to just above its uh, 200 day moving average as well of late Okay, so that's the word coming in on some sugar stocks as well and which are the names that stand out. Pankaj wanted your take regarding the metals pack as well. Now, yesterday we got the commentary from uh, Mr. N. Chandra as well saying that there are a lot of levers available as well as demand is concerned and the supply side issue is not something which is a lot perturbing. Uh, where would you stand uh, as far as the metal space is concerned? Is the best over or there's still some upside in a, in a bit of medium term uh, you know, view? So when we look at metal as a metal and mining as an overall space, obviously the prices have corrected 15 to 20 odd percent, be it for uh, uh, steel or be it for aluminium, and obviously that will have implications in terms of a bit of pattern, given the fact that the uh, 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 coking coal prices are still at elevated levels, and we haven't seen that kind of a meaningful correction in iron ore prices. So spreads are going to be lower. On top of it, uh, the companies have taken some bit of a maintenance shutdown. So, so from that perspective, uh, we are expecting a softer set of numbers. Uh, and also, uh, to top it up, uh, we are still not sure what kind of stimulus China would sort of come out with uh, to sort of uh, stabilize uh, their overall housing as a segment. Uh, because that will have implications for uh, uh, steel as an overall uh, pack. So, so from that perspective, uh, their uh, near-term triggers are still sort of missing. Uh, but our sense is that uh, companies are uh, pursuing capex. Uh, uh, and also, uh, given the fact that uh, this kind of uh, export duty measures which the government has come out with are short-term measures, something of that sort happened in 2008. Uh, so, uh, full, uh, full uh, uh, withdrawal of those measures happened uh, within the period of six months. So, but then again, near-term triggers are missing. But some, uh, what one can sort of look at in metal and mining spaces are probably something like Coal India. Uh, it's trading at uh, less than five times in uh, uh, One is, uh, you'll see diesel volume growth uh, to about 675 uh, million tons this year and uh, about 700 million tons next year. And then uh, given the uh, uh, commodity prices, especially coal uh, is at a higher level, uh, we expect a positive rubber for a stock like Coal India. So that is one stock which we are liking. We are also liking Ratnamani Metals because uh, it's a company which is a play on industrial tubes and pipes. And that, that is one segment uh, which is sort of uh, looking good, given the fact that the overall refining uh, as a segment is uh, looking quite positive. Uh, okay. Nuresh, what will bring a smile on your face today? What is that position which you, you have open position which will make you smile? You've not smiled from last two or three days, so I might as well ask you that position. Uh, so that would be looking at an ITC or Ashok yeah. Lehman. ITC is making people smile. Aise din aage. Pankaj. <laughs> ITC is making people smile these days. So, uh, I think uh, the only uh, uh, reason or key trigger which I am sort of watching in the market is the crude oil prices. I think the moment crude oil prices decline, uh, the pressure on the currency uh, and the CAD uh, will sort of come off. And I think that will sort of address uh, the worries on the inflation front. Uh, probably the FI selling what we are seeing also would sort of uh, recede. So I think crude is the uh, biggest variable which can sort of uh, uh, which can sort of uh, really tilt the overall uh, uh, sentiment uh, of the market. Otherwise, domestically, I think from an economic perspective, we are still sort of doing absolutely fine. It is all that uh, crude has been sort of at elevated levels for a longer period of time. Uh, so, crude is the uh, single most important variable uh, which we are watching as well. Okay. Like they say, never say never. Today, ITC is the poster boy. The, the, the stock in last six months has managed to beat just about every major index stock. Where is Nifty in last six months? This year, actually, six months almost now. Uh, 271. ITC is up 24%. This also includes a dividend of 15, 16 rupees which must have come in. You know, Dimpy has given me a, st a stock list about stocks which are below 200 DMA and the interesting one for me is ICICI Lombard. The other one is Star Life. Pankaj Pandey, any specific reason why insurance stocks are getting clobbered? I mean, I don't see a logic here, but the price action is telling me that markets are nervous. Even LIC, I mean, before you answer LIC, 900 rupee stock has come to 650, it's a cheap stock. LIC, ICS Lombard, Star Health, insurance stocks have are literally on a butcher block. 
So uh, when we sort of look at insurance as an overall pack, uh, so we have new players which have sort of entered. And mind you, BFSI is already some 35, 36% of the overall weightage. To expect that this allocation from a portfolio perspective will go up is a challenge. And uh, the other uh, perspective is that uh, we all know that uh, uh, largely the FI selling is uh, largely concentrated in sectors like say BFSI and IT. And also when we look at say something like uh, 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 general insurance, last two years have been sort of uh, very sort of muted given the fact that uh, uh, even for a company like ICCI, uh, uh, generally if you look at last two years, auto as a sector hasn't really sort of done well, which is the biggest portion of their pie. So uh, when you really do not have a top line growth uh, uh, in general for uh, uh, so uh, so so which is why you would not see much of a price performance and I think which is what is sort of uh, getting reflected. I think banks are still a lot more better because now you are sort of getting even credit growth. There is no major asset quality concerns at least with the tier one private banks and they are trading at attractive valuation. So SDFC Bank at 2.6, uh, Access Bank at uh, 1.5, and SBI at 1.2. I think these are uh, better picks uh, within the overall BFSI as a space. Okay, so ICICI and Lombard, in fact, uh, saw very high deliveries yesterday, 81% more than uh, what you normally see. So that's as far as the insurance sector also goes, Star Health hit a 52-week low. And here's a quick uh, alert for all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will be joined by the Star Health top management later on in the show, so stay tuned for that. We'll be more in conversation. Right, Pankaj Pandey, I want to also ask you about Sun Pharma. I know you haven't said it, but there is a brokerage firm giving a tactical idea. Morgan this Stanley. Firm. Morgan Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> that the stock price will go up in 15 days. Uh, we saw very high deliveries on this stock also yesterday. What's your call? So, uh, uh, very difficult to comment what uh, will be the price movement in the next uh, 15 days. But overall, our sense is that uh, the pain what you are seeing in the US market, especially on the overall solids, could recede in the next two quarters. And uh, uh, Sun Pharma uh, has been sort of doing well in the complex generic as a space, and which is uh, where the price uh, erosion is relatively less. So relatively, it's a sort of a better company within the overall uh, uh, pharma exporters given the exposure to the uh, US market. So Sun Pharma is uh, uh, one of the stocks which are uh, topics in the typical exporter uh, segment. In addition to that, we like Cipla also, but, and both the stocks are trading at about 24, 25 times. So I think pharma is one sector uh, which hasn't really sort of done much in the last two years. Uh, so it could be a beneficiary of the sector rotation which can pan out given the fact that most of the pain is already there in the prices and any kind of a uh, normalization uh, uh, going forward uh, in US demand or in terms of price ero uh, erosion and receding, I think will have a positive rub of, uh, so I think Sun Pharma and uh, Cipla are looking attractive to us. Okay, so that's as What's far as uh, Sun Pharma goes. Uh, we will be also uh, focusing on the pharmaceutical pack later on in the show. And uh, time to get you some more fundamental ideas. Here are some experts like Chakri Lokpriya, and he's betting on SRF as well as autos. What's the rationale? Listen in. We've added uh, basically some of the companies which are the export-based companies, companies like uh, SRF. Second is, you know, Jubilant in Arabia is a name which I've talk we've spoken about earlier. Uh, companies changing its profile, becoming more high margin business, Trades at about uh, 11 times. Earnings growth will be north of 20 times. That is one. Second, also have, have added in the auto pack, have added Hero Motor Corp uh, and TVS Motors, as well as Tata Motors. Now, Tata Motors has both domestic as well as uh, uh, foreign market exposure, has both commercial vehicle as well as two, uh, passenger vehicles, has both electric vehicles as well as ICU engines. So they are there across price points, which is a very unique company, you know, whether it's domestic or worldwide. So that, that's another company which we've, looked at, uh, we've added.
what is Mr. K D R G betting on? Now he's been slightly recluse of late. Trust me, I am going to send him a text right after this show, requesting him for an interview. Vijay Bai, if you're watching, please reply. Uh, but interestingly, <clears throat> he's been bullish on, uh, and this as per the BSC bulk data, he's bought into Elecon. Why is he bought into Elecon, and what is so exciting about the soft capex cycle? I think we'll uh, can try and understand from him. Pankaj, I'm going to just uh, request you for one more idea from the capital goods space, which is not LNT, because LNT is like this no-brainer stock. I mean, if you're bullish on India, you buy Nifty. So if you're bullish on capital goods, buy LNT. It's like both you and me have grown up talking about LNT as the only and the best play on capex. But apart from that, what else are you liking? I think uh, besides LNT, if you look at uh, we are bullish on AI engineering, uh, uh, we would expect uh, volume growth uh, next uh, two years to be in double digits. So that is one company. LD equipment is another. Uh, we also like uh, the welding as a space. So Ador welding uh, is uh, another stock uh, which we have been liking. Uh, so uh, uh, so overall, uh, besides this, if uh, one has to sort of look at, uh, I think the bearing uh, companies are looking attractive to us, given the fact that last quarter they have been able to maintain margins. And if there is a softness in commodity prices, so our sense is that they'll be able to protect their margins, if not increase. Uh, so uh, within that, Timkin and SKF are another ones uh, which are looking good. That's uh, AI engineering for you. That's the other one. You know, this company would benefit largely if the cement capex picks up. Uh, I just want to bring this point out for our viewers that when the capex cycle picks up, what's the first thing? Just think about it logically. You'll buy land. Then you'll construct a building. Then you'll buy machinery. Uh, there are a lot of companies which also are doing upgradation, which is that the expanding capacity, they're adding more capacity. So soft capex or companies which are in the machinery business, whether you're upgrading your energy cost, whether you're trying to save from uh, renewable sources, non-renewable sources to renewable sources, if you're adding a new source <clears> of energy, these are some of these companies would be immense beneficiary if this entire CAPEX cycle starts. Builder Group is talking about uh, increasing cement capacity. Adani's are, are looking at increasing their capacity. Any company which has got to do in the capacity, uh, which has got to do with cement ancillary, I think that place will do very well. And that's a word which I think we must use. We always think that ancillary means auto-ancillary. No, that's the mindset. Mm. Ancillary means auto-ancillary. Mm. But there are other companies also. <laughs> there are other sectors also. Industry. If the cement capex will start, if a company is making grinders, yeah. if a company is making uh, you know, machinery which is used in cement manufacturing, those companies will benefit. If the ethanol cycle picks up, Praj has benefited. Mm. If the steel cycle will pick up, the steel ancillary companies will do well. This capex was the missing link from the last many years, and I think that is about to start. So, folks, remember, ancillary does not always mean auto ancillary. Every ancillary company which is in the cement capex or the steel capex, that will benefit. That's the limited point I'm trying to bring out. And Anisha, think about it. How many times do we discuss other ancillary stocks which are not auto ancillary? True. And how much do we do, do, do or discuss auto ancillary? A lot. Every third idea from the research team sometimes is out of the But industry has charged, you're right. Yeah. And that's also because the scale of the auto and companies have uh, grown quite a bit while the others haven't that much. And when you come to, uh, you know, industrial, you think the likes of Siemens, ABB, etc. But there are a lot of these smaller companies like Elecon, yeah. which are definitely coming to the forefront as Mr. well. Mr. Botha? In fact, Elecon has done exceptionally well. Second straight year, this year I was looking at the price perform performance, 45% up so far this year. And the last year was a stellar year. I think the stock went 3x uh, from its major lows 2020 end for itself. And it still continued to perform pretty well in this kind of a market. So I think exceptional in terms of price performance particularly. You know, we'll put out a graph where, uh, and Pankaj, uh, pay, please pay attention here because this question is coming your way. We'll put out a graph where which are some of the stocks in last three to five years, they've not given any returns. Uh, they've really made solid basis for next five, three to five, in last three to five years. And one stock which comes to my mind, and you'll be surprised here, Tata Motors is one stock which has not given any returns in last three to five years. Similarly, Sun TV is the other stock which has not given any returns in last three to five years. Uh, Patricia, not this one, the other graphic, uh, which talks about last five years, which are some of the stocks which have given no returns. Pankaj, what do you like from this underperformer, no return category? Sun TV. Uh, you've got uh, Tata Motors, even HDFC now almost there. 
So I think between the two names, what you sort of suggested, uh, Tata Motors clearly uh, should benefit. Uh, one is, uh, I think, uh, when you look at their CV margins, so given the price hike, what they've taken or announced yesterday, that should improve their margins from 6% uh, onwards. In addition to that, uh, CV as a cycle is looking very strong for us. Uh, so uh, Tata Motors is uh, obviously expected to be a beneficiary of that. I think the challenge largely lies with uh, the volatility what you see in the Chinese market and the European markets, and which is uh, why uh, the JLR as a portfolio could have implications. But overall, I think this is one company which uh, we've been liking uh, uh, and uh, I think is a buy according to us. Sun TV, we are sort of skeptical given the fact that uh, one, uh, 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 when we look at sort of dividend payout ratios, we are still sort of not really comfortable. And also what we have seen that uh, I mean, when the uh, you don't really see a top line and bottom line growth, and then even then, uh, so uh, uh, the promoter salary remains intact. Uh, so I think that's a sort of a challenge, and uh, so something which is what we will not like. And uh, see, stock uh, cannot. Uh, I mean, let's look at an example of escorts for a period of say more than ten years. It did not perform, and after that, we've seen performance given the fact that uh, when uh, there were structural improvements being made. So uh, just because the stock like Sun TV hasn't really performed, I would not expect or uh, uh, suggest that uh, it can sort of perform going forward. Probably the underperformance can continue for a little bit longer period of time. Okay, so that's the word coming in on some of the counters. But Pankaj, what's your take regarding some of these new platform companies, the likes of Zomato, Paytm, they're definitely grabbing eyeballs. Uh, do these become a buy at some price point or would it be a complete avoid? So as of now, it's a complete avoid. Uh, so even with the correction and we sort of look at, they're still sort of expensive. Uh, uh, and we are still not very sure uh, the path to profitability. So uh, so I, so uh, so, it, uh, so we really do not have that courage to sort of uh, uh, look for next four, five years, what kind of numbers they would uh, sort, of, sort of pan out and basis that uh, can we sort of recommend a buy. So this space is quite dynamic. Uh, we're still sort of watching uh, for models where uh, the path to profitability is clear. I think that is the first thing you will watch. Then I think uh, the valuation will come. But generally, I mean, anything which is trading uh, in excess of 15, 20 times sales, not making profit uh, is still sort of a big challenge. I mean, uh, uh, so you look at FMCG company, they might be trading at 10 times sales, which is the most expensive of the lot. But they make a decent amount of profit. Uh, and then you look at these companies are trading at 40 multiples. So, uh, so I, uh, so I think money is largely safe in a in a FMCG kind of a counter when you look at say Dabur or when you look at Tata Consumer, rather than sort of uh, looking at uh, some of these uh, names. So uh, I think it is still avoid according to us. Just to follow up on that. Uh... For the people who are holding these stocks, does it make sense to book out their losses now and move to the names that you pointed out, the other FMCG names, the likes of Tata Consumer, etc.? So I think, uh, see, uh, uh, in these stocks, uh, the allocation cannot be high. So, uh, so that needs to be done if, uh, from a portfolio perspective, it is high, then it needs to be pruned down. Uh, what you can sort of bet is that some of these companies might turn profitable over a period of time and might generate exceptional returns, which is what happened with some of the uh, stocks globally. But uh, if you are holding significant portion, then I think it makes sense to sort of prune down the position. You cannot have a major position in these stocks and expect uh, to sort of outperform the market. That's very risky. Okay, gentlemen, just hang in with us at that time of the show. We just step outside of the stock markets and bring our viewers up to speed uh, with what else is making news. We call this news for a fact, and here it goes. A BJP delegation led by the former Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis met with the Maharashtra Governor Bhagat Singh Koshari. The delegation requested him to ask the Uddhav Thakri government to undergo a floor test, saying it has lost its majority. This is all source-based information. The mother of a tailor has sparked massive tension in Udaipur. Large gatherings have been banned and internet has been suspended across Rajasthan for 24 hours. Section 144 has also been imposed in sensitive areas. The United States is deploying an enhanced nationwide vaccination strategy to counter the continuing spread of the monkeypox and it's rapidly expanding access of doses of the vaccine targeted for smallpox and its viral cousin which is called the monkeypox. NATO General Secretary Jens Stoltenberg said that NATO has reached a deal to admit Sweden and Finland after resolving the concerns of holdout 
Turkey. The um, push to add the two countries uh, comes as Russia's assault on Ukraine strokes fear among other countries as well. And 23-time Grand Slam singles champion Serena Williams was defeated in her first single match in a year on Tuesday by unseeded Harmony Tan in the first round of Wimbledon 2022. So Serena is out. Rafael Nadal is through to round two. All right, now there's one simple graph which I want to put out. And the question this morning is, uh, US markets are down. Asian markets are down, crude is up, are we likely to fall in tandem with what US markets have done? But think about it. S&P was up 7.5% from the recent low, Nifty was up 4.5% from recent low. So on the way up, <coughs> were the, we did not go up in the same proportion. So on the way down, will we go down in the same proportion? There you go. This is on Tuesday's low. You add yesterday's gain back. It was about 7% before uh, the route happened last night on Wall Street. And Nifty is a 4%. Now, Kunal, I'm going to add back yesterday's <laughs> loss. That makes it 7% plus for S&P, 4% for Nifty, 4.5% for Nifty, which means on the way up, we did not go up. On the way down, we'll be fall less. So I think it's, uh, it's the other, it's in, in fact, both ways, because on the way down as well, the global markets have fallen more than 20%. Yeah. We have not fallen more than 20%. So we've touched those bear market rates for S&P, NASDAQ, etc. So the correction, so typically what happens is when an asset class tends to fall sharply, the rebound is also more sharper. That's the law of uh, uh, you know, uh, price movement for these kind of asset classes. So the rebound is bound to be more stronger, more uh, uh, higher in terms of price percentages. But then we'll have to look at, so since it's the expiry week for us, you know, we'll, we go back to the same, uh, you know, uh, constituents of our markets where we look at the built up on the option side because that generally governs the, uh, you know, rule of the market, assuming there is nothing chaotic which happens across the globe. And that, that data still indicates that we are still into a consolidation for the index. In fact, there was a very uh, strong indication of a straddle shorting which happened on the 15,800 strike at 200 points premium. That indicates that 15,600 to 16,000 could be a broad range for the index. So the closer we are to 15,600 mark, the higher the possibility that we may see some sort of a, uh, you know, a pullback or a, or a reversal or a mild rally as such on the indices. The interesting, um, you know, quote from uh, tweet from Manish Chokhani. I'm going to play that tweet once again. It's, uh, I mean, he tweeted, I think, on over the weekend. Yeah, the risk reward ratio, according to Manish Chokhani, and just bear with me. You know, I've got this random habit of just zigzagging from one topic to the another. But it's important, but I want to bring this point out just to set the context here. Just because US markets have fallen, are we likely to fall on the same quantum? And I'm afraid and I'm I'm afraid that is not the case. Why? Because you've got very different dynamics which are at play and it is getting more and more pronounced as things progress. Markets seem to have a three and a half thousand to four thousand point upside in the next twelve to eighteen months, but perhaps a thousand point downside. Which means that if you look at mathematically, what Manish is saying is that you've got a risk reward ratio of 1 is to 3. So chances of money moving, so if you start with a capital, I think 50-50 for me is even Steven. But when the risk reward ratio is more than 50, that's the time you go long. And right now, according to Manish Chokhani, it is almost 65-70%. Almost there is a scope of markets will make money or you will make money as an investor in next... Uh, 12 to 18 months. Where is Nifty? 15,000. I look at Manish Okani's number, 15, that's simple maths, 3,000 divided by 15. I mean, what Manish is making a case that there could be a double digit return in early teens in next 12 to 18 months. Pankaj Pandey, do you agree with Manish Okani that a 12, in next 12 to 18 months, a double digit return for Nifty is coming? Absolutely. I think uh, when you look at corporate earnings, you'll have 13-14% kind of a growth, if not better. Uh, uh, so uh, so earnings are definitely on the positive side. Domestically, we are doing absolutely fine. So it is just that the global sentiments are sort of getting so uh, domestically, and which is why you see gloom in the markets. And our sense is that it cannot happen that the crude remains at elevated levels and world also sort of grows. And as and when the, the recession uh, uh, or data which is pointing towards the recession in the key economy like uh, Europe or US uh, sort of keeps coming out, there will be pressure on the oil prices. And I think that will be sort of a very good news for us uh, because that will sort of reduce uh, the FI selling pressure, uh, the inflationary pressure. And I think obviously that will sort of lead to far more uh, uh, or that can lead to uh, a double-digit kind of a returns in the Nifty. 
and even our uh, nifty target uh, is uh, pointing towards that so we have a target of about 18700 on the nifty for the next one nuresh let me make you smile itc is off to a flat to a positive start in the pre open session uh, so uh, let's see where it ends up and uh, where it opens up uh, would not trust the opening session as such you know one of those days i'm feeling to make my friend nuresh smile you know what, I, maybe i can try that the demands uh, are very high. you know what nuresh one of your topics yesterday was linde india i definitely did perform yesterday and did the day higher by 4 to 5% today are you seeing more upside on that counter is that something that can bring some cheer for you i think that was uh, kunal speak so i think <laughs> kunal I, i'll smile on his behalf <laughs> or maybe you can smile on his behalf this was a show clean this was a show clean in access Ah, okay, at least some cheer. Whatever is the reason, there is some cheer in the studio. <laughs> Fair enough. So, what are your top bets then, uh, the race for the day? What are the stocks you'll watch out for apart from ITC and Reliance? That is. So, overall, looking at that Ashok Leyland itself, <laughs> uh, continued like the whole auto pack as such. Uh, so, we've seen Mahindra and Mahindra make a new 52-week high and an all-time high. We've seen TVS Motors make a 52-week high. Uh, we've come close to a monthly high for uh, Ashok Leyland. It has finally crossed that 143, 145 mark. Uh, that's the first indication the trend is set. So out here, uh, if this momentum continues, it could go higher uh, towards 170. A stop loss to be kept at 139. Okay, so now we have uh, Nuresh Marani's uh, picks in. Uh, Kunal, what about you? So MFSL Max Financial Services is uh, also one of the stocks which has done reasonably well from the May uh, month lows from 700. The stock is up uh, some 12 percent, 13 percent above those 800 mark for itself, and I think now at current levels it's trying to end a consolidation. So indicators have started to get into the bullish zone for MFSL, and, and prices should also try and come out of this minor consolidation. Would suggest a buy. Targets to be kept at 850. Stop loss 795. Okay, so that's the word coming in on some of the counters which are coming as cracker bets from our charters. But uh, Pankaj, if I had to ask you, which is the sector that you are betting on, and from the broader markets, suddenly these specialty chemical names are doing well again. Sugar stocks have been buzzing around, and textile too have been seeing a good day given the fact that cotton prices have come off almost 30 percent from the record high levels. Is there any of the names that you like from these sectors? So I think uh, within sugar, our sense is that something like uh, Dalmia Bharat should benefit, given the fact that it will be one of the biggest exporters. So that is one stock uh, where uh, we see an upside of uh, more than 50 percent. Dwarka Sugar is another stock where we see an upside of more than 40 percent from current prices. On the cotton side, while the global prices have corrected, the domestic prices have corrected only 15, 16 odd percent, and our sense is that it will sort of correct further. And that should sort of help companies like KPR Mills, uh, Gokul Das Export. I think these companies have been sort of uh, taken a uh, knock uh, recently, largely because there was an expectation that probably uh, uh, the other competing uh, countries might sort of do well relative to them. So I think that will sort of address uh, some of these uh, concerns for these companies. So uh, I think, uh, and uh, then I think uh, overall, even uh, the infra as a space uh, is looking sort of attractive to us because our sense is that. Within roads, uh, you will see companies like KNR, uh, which isn't really sort of done much. Is uh, so ideally, uh, uh, our sense is that uh, the road construction and the water as a segment uh, should. Uh, uh, that is where we expect the capex to sort of pick up, and companies like KNR uh, will benefit from that uh, aspect. Uh, Max Financial Services. That's a buy from Kunal. Now, Max Financial Services is the company which is in the insurance business. And insurance stocks, otherwise, have got clobbered. So, Kunal, you're recommending something where the sector is in a downturn. But I think the stock has done reasonably well. No. Uh, in fact, that's what I said in the last one month. When you try and compare ICICI Lombard, you try and compare Reliance, the recently listed name, HTFC Life, Star Health, Star Health, these Success. stocks have fallen Sydney sharply. Life. On on the on on the other hand, MFSL has actually risen in a vertical manner and then consolidated. So that's a very interesting pattern on the positive side. Uh, Nuresh, are insurance stocks looking oversold, extremely oversold in some cases, and could they be in for a sharpish bounce like we are talking about banks, where a sharpish bounce is now due? Nuresh, so this as a sector, even in the good times, did not show a lot of momentum. Uh, so even today, they are not very oversold. There are uh, pockets which are uh, 
so in this, every stock has a very different chart. So if you look at a SBI life, the stock has not corrected much from the top. Then if you look at HDFC life, that has corrected quite a lot from the top and has gone in a different trend, which is more negative. Then you look at a max financial services, which corrected quite a bit from 1150 all the way to 700 has now started showing signs of positivity. So if I look at all the charts, the structure is very different. Then you have a star health, which is a new one, which has just uh, been a one way down tick. Uh, uh, ICICI Pro has gone into a sideways slumber. So the strongest of them in the relative terms has been SBI life. And in terms of the recovery part, it is Max Financial, which looks interesting. But the whole sector does not have uh, any characteristics of momentum on either side in a big way. So would not expect a major bounce uh, or an oversold bounce in this space. Okay. With that, Pankaj Pandey, I'd like to thank you for being uh, live with us and joining us on the show. See you again uh, soon on this very show. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 9.05, just a little after 9.05 a.m. You know.